Hey friends, welcome to my daily update video. Today is Wednesday, it is November 16th, and Jesus is Lord. Good to be here with you. Coming to you from Belfast in Northern Ireland today. Um, hey, in a moment, I want to give you seven keys, the seven keys to building a successful Christian life every day. And uh, how to walk with God in a high place. The Bible says God will give us feet like hinds feet and we'll walk the high places of the earth. More about that in a moment. Let me do a few quick housekeeping things first. So, top of the morning to you. Mm. From uh, Northern Ireland. Beautiful cold day here, but um, God is good. Hey, if you are new to my YouTube channel, please uh, hit the subscribe button down there. Give the bell symbol a long press. Uh, check out all of the links below. Our website, gjm.org. And uh, probably the best way of keeping in touch with me is my weekly email newsletter. we will be going out in a couple of days' time with fun things, travel news, testimonies, healing testimonies this week, um, books I'm reading, lots of different things like that. Uh, there'll be a link below me or go to gjm.org to subscribe to that. Um, just some meetings this week. I have an evening off today and I'm going to be in uh, Down Patrick in Northern Ireland tomorrow with uh, Pastor George Ritchie doing a revival service there. So that's Thursday, November 17th. Yeah. Um, hey, this coming weekend, so that will be uh, the, let's see, 19th, I want to say. I'm going to be in Sturbridge Worship Center Sunday morning, Sturbridge Mass in New England Fellowship in the afternoon there, speaking all about growth and inheritance. You don't want to miss that, so good things there. Lastly, let me mention as well, I have a new course uh, that came out. Um, I still have it on offer at 50% off. Really important course. It actually touches on what I'm teaching on today, all about spiritual discipline how to practice your Christian life. So let me jump into this. I remember once years ago just being kind of really dissatisfied with my own walk with God and coming to the Lord and saying, Lord, why is it that, you know, at times it feels like I'm in a really high place with you and yet so often it really doesn't and uh, kind of bringing my frustrations to the Lord. And I remember the Holy Spirit gave me a really simple answer that stayed with me and that has actually changed my perspective and viewpoint on Christianity. The Lord said to me, Graham, you don't practice. And I was kind of like, what do you mean I don't practice? What is, how do you practice Christianity? Um, and I felt the Lord said to me, Graham, you don't practice and uh, you expect to be good at this, to live a Christian life that works without practicing. And uh, come on, I want to get you thinking about that for a moment today. God wants us to practice our Christian life. You know, I've been playing the guitar since, uh, man, probably around about 1984, 85, something like that. And, and yet there have been probably two or three seasons in my life where I've really advanced and I've been in one for about the last couple of years where I think what, what I've done as a guitarist and so often I see other musicians do is they plateau, they stay at a certain level and then they keep playing the same songs or the same riffs and the same strums or the same scales or the same everything and they don't stretch, they don't do new things and they don't practice, they just have acquired some skills and occasionally they pull them out and display the glory to the world and then put them back and um, you know I've learned if I want to practice guitar I need to have I have guitars in my office I have guitars all over the place and when nearly every single day I'll pick one up and do something for it and I try and have a moment where I'm practicing a few new things that will stretch me and I want to kind of do them, do them well, do them with discipline, with the metronome until I bake them into my inner man and um, Come on, let me give you seven keys that will really help your Christian life grow. Hey, number one, if it doesn't happen every day. <laughs> let me say that again. If it doesn't happen every day, it's not really happening as part of your life. And I think it would really behoove us to look, actually to look forward probably till the end of our life, or the end season of our life, and think, what are the habits, what are the practices that we want to be engaged in uh, for the rest of our life, what will, be, what will we be really glad that we have done, spiritually speaking, towards the end of the life? You know, I've taken a decision a few years back, and uh, it's a hard decision. It wasn't easy for me, but uh, I want to exercise pretty much every day. 
you know, five or six days a week. I want to try to fast every morning. I want to try to really push into eating well every day of the week I can. And you know, there are some exceptions and I get some days off from that, but um, I want that to be my normal. I don't want to wake up and think, do I exercise today or not? Uh, how do I feel? If I went by my feelings, I would never exercise, which is probably what I used to do. And I, I think if we don't, we've got to take the things we want to be part of our spiritual life and literally bake them into the fabric of our daily life. <clears throat> Come on, key number two, don't confuse, I've written this down, don't confuse working out for working for. This is my point. When we practice our Christian life, when we read our Bible, when we pray in tongues, when we abide in God's presence, the things we do, we're not earning brownie points from God. We're not earning anything from God. Jesus earned us everything from God by his death, sacrifice, and resurrection. And in a way, when we practice our spiritual life, we're working out our salvation, not working for our salvation. So it's really important we don't get into dead works and, um, you know, trying to do things to please God, rather than realizing the blood of Jesus pleases God and faith pleases God. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. So faith in the blood of Jesus pleases God. You work out your salvation. You don't work for your salvation. Key number three is this. Start small. I mean, a lot of people who fail, I would say, in their Christian life because they try to set some lofty goals. I want to read 20 chapters of the Bible every day. Why not read half of one every day? Why not read one verse every day? If you're not used to actually reading something, start small, start realistically. Start with something you're actually going to do. Put that into practice and let that build and grow over time. Come on, keep it before. Um, I'll come back to this analogy of eating well. Prepare in advance. I have learned this, that took me again a long time to learn this about my diet and my health, that the times I'm tempted, let's say, to eat poorly, it's not usually like I'm obsessed with food, it's usually I don't prepare in advance, I don't think well, I wait until I get really hungry and then the only, it's interesting, most of the foods you can get um, at a second's notice, most drive through foods, most fast foods, most things you can pick up and eat straight away are not that great for you. Now there are some, sure, but most of them are not that great for you. And I've learned if I want to eat well in a healthy manner, I need to think in advance and prepare and have the right things there and also not have the wrong things there. But in the same way spiritually, if we're going to have a Christian life that flourishes and that is well, I think we need to prepare well. We need to have the other time, frankly, we need to bake that into our time. If we have an attitude that says, I'll spend God time with God, uh, if everything lines up, you're never going to spend any time with God. If you say, I'm going to spend time with God, come what may, and the other things will have to line themselves up. If you say you're going to seek first the kingdom of God as righteousness, and then all these things will be added to you, life actually begins to work for you. So I would really say plan if you're going to uh, build a successful Christian life. Come on, nearly done here, but key number five, get a vision of this. I actually have a vision of how I want to walk with God. And I, I don't want to sound too ethereal and, um, you know, otherworldly. But I mean, literally right now, like a little movie I can play in my life of how I want to walk with God today. I want to walk with the Lord in a high place today. It's great. I'm in a, one of my favorite cities on the earth. Um, here with my daughter, having a good Americano in Belfast. Um, you know, I'm going to do some work in this cafe here, put some nice music on, I'm going to go shopping, I'm going to have some healthy lunch, uh, I may need to drive down to Dublin today, I'm going to take some friends out for dinner this evening. Um, things are good, but here's the point, I've got that vision of that happening, I'm not, and that vision actually empowers me, I'm not like, oh, I wonder what's going to happen today. You know, without a vision we cast off restraint, without a vision we perish. So actually have a vision of yourself walking with God well as you do that. Come on, two new keys here. Number six, find the joy. Find the joy. You know, if you make, um, I keep coming back to this food thing today, but I, I had to learn that if I was going to eat well, I had to find things that I should eat, that I like eating, that I actually look forward to eat, that I find joy in. And um, 
I need to replace bad food I like with good food I like. And if you associate spending time with God with drudgery, with a chore, with oh, okay, I'm going to spend time with God, as if you're like sitting there reading the baguettes upside down in your Bible. Uh, yeah. That's really not going to pull you back. You're going to start building um, what uh, the author of the War of Art called resistance. You're going to build internal resistance. You're going to begin to resist doing this. You're going to find a million other things, a million other excuses uh, that you that pop up automatically to stop you spending time with God. But if rather you start small and you build the habits of joy, you enjoy spending time with God. What will happen is you'll start doing that all the time. Yeah, if you find a book that you really love, man, you don't have to wait for your one hour of reading every day. You pull it out every time you can. You'll get the audio book, you'll put it on, and hallelujah, create habits and places of joy, and your soul will be pulled back to them. That's how God wants to live. If you're not enjoying spending time with God, why do you think God would be? Why would God enjoy it? if you're not enjoying it. <laughs> Come on, here's my last thought as well. Key number seven, don't live in response to crisis. And by that I mean a lot of people only really begin to seek God when they're frankly in crisis, when they're having a rough time, when things are not going so well. And that's a really bad place to be because God wants you to enjoy spending time with Him all the time. He wants you to enjoy spending time with Him. He wants your motivation not to be, oh, we've got a terrible crisis here, but rather, he's a good God, and you enjoy being with him, and that you're building faith, building, as it were, resource for the future. Your motivation is him, not a crisis. When your motivation is him, you build a strong Christian life, and when crisis hits you, as it will, sooner or later, you've got the momentum and the power to break through those things. Boom. Guys, I hope some of that helps. Again, quick reminder, I have a course. Uh, there should be a link below, this Disciplines course. The Disciplines of a Spirit-Filled Life. There are 12 video lessons, audio lessons, PDF notes, questions for reflection. Lots of great things there in that online course. Uh, you get lifetime access, and it is currently half price. If you can't afford that, drop me a line and I'll help you with that. But uh, that would be a real blessing to you. And lastly, don't hit that subscribe button if you haven't done that before. Why not share this video on some social media platforms? And I will hope to see you soon in the plan of God. Bye for now.